Hey nerds, how's everyone doing? Hope you all are kind of you know, buried in your nerdy stuff and might have having a blast, right? But hold up, put everything aside for a moment and gather around. We are about to dive into a super interesting topic today. And guess what? This is the first ever English tragedy, which is Garbodak. And I can sense the excitement in the air and I'm thrilled too. So before we jump into this blood soaked tragedy, I want all of you to drop a quick hi in the chat box or comment section so I can just see how many of you, you know, a few awesome folks are there. And don't forget to smash that like button and hit that subscribe bell also. So all right, let's get this show on the road, right? So as you can see in the screen, uh, there is this old English play called The Tragedy of Gorbodak or simply Ferex and Porex from way back in 1561. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. So today in this class, we, we are going to discuss like Ferex and Porex and all the bloodshed tragedy which started in English theatre, right? So let's move quickly to the context of the play. As we know, it is published or uh, performed in 1561 and it was performed during Christmas by some fancy folks at the Inner Temple and they even put on a show for Queen Elizabeth I herself in January 1561. So the play was written by two guys named, uh, the name, uh, name are Thomas Norton and Thomas Sackville. So Norton did the first three act and Sackville took care of the rest of the acts or the last two acts so the play got published for the first time in 1565 by a bookseller named william griffith and then the authors released an updated version in 1570 which was printed by a guy named john day and called the tragedy of ferex and porex a third edition again came out in 1519 by edward edward alde so now what's interesting about this play is that it's the first English verse drama to use blank verse and which is like, you know, poetry without rhyme. So that blank verse is like poetry without rhyming. And it also tackles some political stuff. So with Gorboduk's sons fighting over the kingdom, this was kind of, you know, sensitive topic at the time because Queen Elizabeth's on succession was a bit uncertain and the play is kind of blends element from morality plays and tragedies by Seneca as we have discussed in our previous class uh, about Seneca right and Senecan tragedy so can you tell me what is the Senecan main theme just drop uh, in the chat box just right there or comment whatever you know about the Senecan tragedy and what is Seneca's main theme regarding tragedy. And, uh, you know, that style would later influence uh, other playwrights, all the Senecans, especially in Renaissance theatre. So you could say it, you know, it the paved uh, the way for plays like Titus, Andronicus and King Lear. And here's a cool fact. The tragedy of Corboduc is known for being the first play with solid evidence of a performance in Ireland. So you can say that was the first international tragedy also. So some dude named Charles Blount, who was the eighth Baron Monjoy staged it at Dublin Castle in 1601, right? So that was all about the context here. Let's move quickly to the characters and you can see the list over here and uh, the main characters, as you see, is uh, Ferex and Porex and Gorboduc and the Vidna, Eubulus, Arostus, Hermon and Dordan, Fergus and Nontius. Let's go quickly one by one, just uh, brief about them. The first you can see is Gor Gorboduc, right? And we have this character. It is kind of a big boss man and he's the rural uh, ruler of the real, but he's getting old and as he getting old what he does he wants to divide he wants to pass on the kingdom to his sons you can imagine him, uh, him like sitting on a throne grumbling about his creaky joints and asking for his you know reading glasses i'm just 
saying that he is quite old and he has he wants to pass on his kingdom to his sons right and he wants to divide all the kingdom so again next character is ferex and porex they are brother i mean brother together and the sons of garbodak right so these kind of you know these uh, trouble making brothers are like those siblings who constantly at each other's throat right arguing over who gets the last piece of pizza so exactly the same i can imagine this pizza has kingdom so these two are fighting over who gets to be the next ruler causing all sorts of drama so they seriously need to take a chill pill and share a plate of nachos or something but it's not like that between brothers especially in cynic and tragedy right they want everything for themselves right they are kind of selfish and so anyway let's move on to another character videna she also plays a quite important role in the play and why because she is the mother of ferex and porex and it's kind of you know uh, she is your typical worried mom always like fretting about her boys and trying to keep the peace but that doesn't happen right you can picture her giving them long lecture about sibling love while they roll their eyes and secretly plot against each other i'm just giving the present example so you can just have fun while learning anyway another character here comes is eubulus and what this character does he is a kind of wise counselor and he's the guy who always you know spouting off you know advice like a walking fortune cookie and you'll find him stroking his beard nodding sagely and dropping nuggets of wisdom that nobody really listens to and then we come to this character there's a minor character and these uh, like a straws harman is important character and we'll talk about him later anyway and these uh, character also have like you know lords and ladies probably like dressed in fancy robes and you know gossiping about the whole royal mess so they're like the popular kids in high school you know sipping their fancy drink and judging everyone from afar so they also played important character and then we have ghost and that ghost and um, you know a ghost shows up to haunt people and mess with their head it's like the ultimate prankster pulling off spooky tricks and giving everyone a good scare so there you have it a kind of you know quirky crew of the tragedy of korobot so these characters are there anyway let's move to the plot and that's what you have been waiting for i guess and let's start and this is all the point over here you can just see and what you can do you can even take a screenshot if you want otherwise you this a ppt in pdf form will be available in your class in your app and i hope you have joined the class and if you uh, haven't just wow just search uh, in this somewhere in the description box you'll get the link but if you don't get it just uh, write in the comment and i'll provide the link but anyway let's move to the synopsis guys this plot summary so i'll just be like you know i'll put it in a funny way even though it's tragedy but you know some of us are you know different kind of character who learns things with some you know humor is there or some you know funny thing involves then we can understand better right but anyway that's my our nerdy way to understand things so here's the low down on this play right called the tragedy of garbodak right and uh, sorry for that let me fix this yeah fine so we got this king garbodak who is like the you know king of britain and he's like you know to his son hey son so i'm going to split my kingdom between you guys so what happened his advisor like oh it's not a great idea sir remember what happened with those cousins of morgan and kyun dad it was a mess but now even though i'm not going to listen to you i'm going to split my kingdom to my sons so what happens garbodak doesn't care and what he does he goes goes ahead with the plan and divides the king kingdom now the interesting part now ferex one of the sons get some bad advice from this parasite guy you know every play has some you know a toxic guy and that guy is harman that we talked in the character list right and this parasite guy what he's he, you know he told ferex like dude just take the whole kingdom for yourself why would you give to porex right so this kind of poison he actually messes with ferex head meanwhile what happens on the other hand porex the other son 
finds out about Ferex's plans and decide to invade his brother's stuff. So that's whole, you know, tragedy starts from there. So again, another guy is there. This guy named Dorden sends a letter to Gorboda telling him about Borek's invasion plan. So what happens when father finds out your some secrets what will happen so Karboduk freaks out and it starts thinking about raising an army to deal with this situation but hold up a messenger again shows up with some bad news that Ferex is dead what man already dead well that's what happened in the play then Perex as we know Ferex is dead according to the messenger Perex then meets his father and you know, tries to justify his action. See, Ferex was trying to steal his, steal my kingdom, my part of the kingdom. But what can I do? I have to kill him, right? That's what he told. But guess what? Now, Porex, now who comes? Porex's mom, Videna, gets all kind of, you know, revengeful. And in the stage, what she does, she stabs him. Not in the stage, but while he was sleeping. And that's some intense family drama, right? So, again, the revenge right so that's what happened mother's vitena stabs porex while he was sleeping so the people were not happy about all this madness so they rise up in anger and kill both vitena and Karboda. what is happening there what kind of plot is there? a simple right so they blame the king for the porex's death and that's what happened but if you think it's over wait there's more the nobles ain't gonna sit around and let the rebel get away with it they start preparing to take them down meanwhile again this dude called fergus who was the duke of albany sees an opportunity to snatch the throne for himself he's like time to gather an army my friends and then he invaded in what he took the throne so the nobles now what happened manages to defeat all these rebels but then they find out that Fergus is again raising an army too. And they were like, oh, no way. We are letting this foreign invader take over. So they stand against Fergus and ready to protect their tough. So some wise guy, again, named Arastas that we talked about. And we have one another character, right? Eubulus. And they were like, hey, let's let the parliament decide on a new king. Okay, we're not going to fight over this. So they're really into the whole democratic process. And Eubulus also complains about the chaos in the country and says they should have called a parliament meeting while King was still alive, but he's confident that justice will eventually prevail. Well, what can we do? Let's hope he's right. Anyway, so there you have it, folk. All the family feud here, all the backstabbing and power and struggle galore. This play is like kind of you know Bollywood twist. So anyway, uh, let's move. This was all about the plot summary here. And let's move quickly to our last slide, which is about themes and motifs and symbol. You must have been wondering if it's kind of a short class, sir. But no. After that, we're going to have Marlowe, Shakespeare, Ben Johnson. That's going to be a hell of a week for you guys. So be prepared for the longer classes. But for today, enjoy this short video so by the way let's just start with the themes and you can see the list of themes here power and its consequences family drama conflict right revenge and its destructive nature there is chaos political insta instability uncertainty and the struggle for succession and justice right so let's talk about one by one so i'll just quickly brief it that themes in couple of uh, paragraphs right so so first thing what happens everything starts with the family feud right first off we got that theme kind of you know family drama i mean it's if you can say it's kind of you know saas bahu soap opera like garbudak sons ferex and porex are at each other's throat all the time plotting and fighting over the kingdom it's like a you know a game of throne happening in some place anyway so again another theme is power and this theme of power and its consequences garbutak wants to divide his kingdom but that decision leads to what chaos and bloodshed it's like that one time when the entire neighborhood like you know fought over who gets to control over the tv remote right exactly that kind of thing was happening there anyway another is revenge if you talk about revenge 
this is actually one big motif of the play it actually you know pushes the play to its limit and one big motif is this revenge revenge it starts from vidana vidana right the mother gets all vengeful and stabs porex while he was sleeping so it's like when your mom finds out you <laughs> finished the last piece of jalebi without seeing her any you know saving her any anything for her so what happens you better watch out for those flying what chappals anyway so that was i'm just saying about that revenge is there then another we have uh, motif of throne so uh, the fergus another character the, the duke of albany wants a you know wants to snatch that crown for himself hmm. it's like another cousin wants you know that extra piece of that pizza right and then we have the divided kingdom which is also a kind of symbol there and this divided kingdom kingdom you know symbolize the chaos and conflict that arises from power and struggles okay so parliament another symbol you can say it's parliament and they are you know what happened they are the ones who decide on the new king and bring some order to the chaos so that's all guys uh, as i tell you symbol is like divided kingdom then the crown bloodshed violence the role of nobility and their actions parliaments as a symbol is also there and this desolation and waste land and motives motives are like division of the kingdom betrayal deceit revenge you know that vengeful and retribution ambition greed loyalty and betrayal rebellion and uprising so this is all happening in that small god border play but anyway that's all for today guys and uh, you must be you know feeling static that the class was kind of small but anyway tomorrow uh, we're going to start malo and it's going to be two hour session where we are going to discuss all about marlow's life all about his play and all the uh, details of the play summary themes analysis and so many more and a special focus will be there for the the grand play and it will be like one hour complete session on dr faustus and it's quite important because that sometime you get question from that right so that will discuss so anyway thank you so much guys and it was you know kind of short but it was good session right so it was kind of you know wild ride filled with family drama power struggles and revenge so this is all here and i'll see you tomorrow so before you go leave a comment and like the video and if you didn't subscribe please do it okay if you don't want to miss any nerdy video So bye bye guys have a great day ahead